Well, thanks very much, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Now, the next time the Leader of the Opposition walks into one of these businesses that he talks about, I want him to look at those owners in the eye, look at those workers in the eye and tell them that you want to increase their taxes. That's what the Leader of the Opposition should do. Every time he wants to use one of them as a backdrop while he's wearing his high vis, every time he wants to use them for a political stunt, I want him to tell those owners and those workers, I want to increase your taxes. Because we've seen the Leader of the Opposition run around this country for two years. He's run around this country for two years talking about the billionaires and the millionaires. He's been talking about the big, nasty multinationals, the Apples and the Googles. These are the people he's going to go after. And what have we got? What have we now got? We've got the Leader of the Opposition saying that small family businesses in this country, small family businesses who might employ as few as a dozen staff, or fewer, small family businesses who treat their employees more like family than employees. He doesn't just want to keep taxes where they are. No, he wants to increase their taxes. They're the nasty, terrible billionaires, millionaires, top end of town. So when he talks about visiting these small businesses, when he talks about visiting these small family enterprises, I want him to look them in the eye and tell them, you need to pay more tax. But we know he won't do that. We know the Leader of the Opposition won't do that, and we know his backbench doesn't support him. And it's wonderful to see that there are some sensible Labor people who want to repudiate what this Leader of the Opposition has done. They want to repudiate it. They want to run away a million miles an hour, because who would want to be associated with such a tawdry policy, treating small Australian businesses trying to get ahead trying to treat them as some sort of second-class group of citizens who don't pay their way and who should be paying more tax. And what was the most telling example of running away from the Leader of the Opposition? Well, it was referred to in question time today. It was the member for Bass, the member for Bass who has got a promising career ahead of him in radio, I'm sure. He was asked by the presenter, Ross, are you on a unity ticket with your leader, Bill Shorten? Member for Bass. Um, the leader has announced that he would support a reduction in, uh, in, sorry, a repeal of the tax rate. It is not being discussed, as I understand, by shadow cabinet. The presenter, this is a captain's call on which your leader has staked his leadership, I would argue. And here I am getting from you a bit of equiv equivocation. Do you support the bloke or not? Do you back your leader, Bill Shorten's call, to repeal the tax for companies of a turnover between 10 and 50 million? Member for Bass. Well, that's a matter that has been announced by Mr Shorten, presenter. So you don't, Ross. You don't support this, do you? Member for Bass, let's have a conversation about this at another time. Let's have a conversation about this the other time. I could read on and on, and we could spend the next six minutes going through that transcript where 13 times the member for Bass, on 13 occasions—it's pretty repetitive, it's pretty repetitive—but on 13 occasions he tries to run a million miles from this leader of the opposition. And it's very interesting to hear the leader of the opposition's MPI. He wasn't talking to the Australian people. He wasn't talking to the government. He was talking to his backbench. He was talking to his backbench, and I must say, I must say, there's some glimmer of hope on the Labor backbench because they didn't look very enthusiastic with the leader of the opposition, and nor should they. Nor should they. This reckless leader of the opposition, who has run around for two years making a whole lot of claims about Australians and the economy and who he was going after, the top end of town, where's he landed? Well, the leader of the opposition. He goes for those who can't fight back. He goes after those who can't fight back. And we shouldn't have been surprised that he's gone after small Australian businesses, independent grocers, small manufacturers, car dealers, car repairers. They're who he's going after. But we shouldn't be surprised because who's the other group that the leader of the opposition has gone after to fund his unsustainable spending? Who else has he gone after? Well, the only other group he's gone after in the same way as small Australian businesses are our retirees. That's right. The single Why biggest the single biggest tax increase from the Leader of the Opposition, if he was to be elected, 
would be to go after the savings of retirees by ensuring they can't use their franking credits. Again, the top end of town, the so-called nasty billionaires and millionaires, they get to keep their franking credits under the lead of the opposition, but low-income low income retirees don't get to use them. So we've got low-income retirees who the Leader of the Opposition is going after. We've got small businesses who the Leader of the Opposition is going after. So we know those who he doesn't think can fight back are the ones who are going to fund his unsustainable spending spree. I want to remind the Leader of the Opposition Member for Cowley. I want to remind the Leader of the Opposition the next time he tries to use a small business as a backdrop while he wears his high vis, that there are one and a half million businesses that he wants to increase taxes on, small businesses that he wants to increase taxes on, uh, 20,000 businesses who employ one and a half million Australians. 20,000 Australian businesses who are competing to export around the world, who are competing in our economy, employ one and a half million Australians, and that's who the Leader of the Opposition is going after. I welcome the member for Bass. I welcome the member for Bass who's just walked in. I welcome him and I say he's a glimmer, he's a ray of light on the Labor backbench. An absolute ray of light on the Labor backbench. Thirteen times. Oh, you didn't he didn't get asked to leave the chamber, surely. Please stay, Member for Bass. Please stay. You'll assist our MPI. Oh, he got asked to leave. The member for Bass. The member for Bass. I hope. I hope the cameras panned around at that point in time. The member for the member for Bass was asked to leave the chamber. The member for Bass was told that he's not assisting the MPI, and he was asked to leave the chamber. Unbelievable! This Labor Party is unbelievable. Shameless. I was I was giving the member for Bass some points for being brave in fronting up, and what happens? And what happens? He gets asked to leave the chamber. Unbelievable. Well, the member for Bass now, the member for Bass now, will be going to some sort of Labor Party re-education camp. A Labor Party re-education camp. They all go through it at some point in time because we know the shadow treasurer. The shadow treasurer wrote a book about reducing taxes. The shadow treasurer wrote a book about how reducing taxes increases investment, increases wealth, and he and he went to the same re-education camp. So I suspect that's where the member for Bass is off to now. How do you do a radio interview and support a tawdry, disgraceful policy of your leader of the opposition? But his instincts were right. His instincts to repudiate the leader of the opposition 13 times was correct because this leader of the opposition is unfit to lead his party, let alone lead this country. Because he's been running around for two years. He's been running around the for two for years. The member for Griffith on a point of order. The member knows he can't impugn the uh, motives or oh. the character of the leader of the opposition. The, the member for Deakin can continue. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. You know things are getting a, bit, are getting a little bit fractious in the Labor Party. You know things are getting a bit fractious in the Labor Party when the member for Bass is asked to leave and then we have, we have spurious points of order from those opposite. I would say the Leader of the Opposition, the leader of the opposition in doing this MPI clearly wasn't speaking to the Australian people. He clearly wasn't speaking to the government. He was speaking to his backbench. And I say to the Labor backbench that this man, this Leader of the Opposition, is unfit to lead your party because he is a man who doesn't believe that small Australian businesses, people who put their hard earned on the line, people who treat their employees more like family than employees, are somehow the top end of town, are somehow big, nasty millionaires and billionaires who need to pay more tax to fund his unsustainable spending. And all of this on top of every other group he wants to act, including retirees, including Australian low-income retirees, low-income retirees who might be living on $25 or $30,000 a year, who will have up to a quarter of their income taken away, ripped away from this leader of the opposition. It's clear. His leadership's failed. His leadership has failed. 
The member for Bass was right. His instincts were right, and we'd love to see the member for Bass back in the chamber. Bring back the member for Bass.